Okay, hi, how you doing? Um, we're going to talk about uh, polar equations and converting them to a rectangular equation. Uh, the equation that I'm going to do is r equals 3 sine theta. My next video will be on r is equivalent to 3 cosine theta plus 2 sine theta. So uh, these would get pretty long and um, obscure and too many problems in one video would take me forever to load. So I'm just going to do this r equals 3 sine theta, and then you know, if you want to check out another video, uh, just go to my um, webpage channel, which is dmingu1, and uh, r equals 3 cosine theta plus 2 sine theta, you can find that on there. Uh, so let's start off with r equals 3 sine theta here. Um, when converting from polar equations to rectangular equations, uh, what you need to know is that polar equations will always have an equation saying that R, which is going to stand for your radial vector, okay? So you have your R, your radius vector, radial vector, you know, whichever you want to call it, your directional vector, uh, is going to be set up, is going to be equal to some sort of um, value. And it will always be based off of some sort of theta. So if that's the case, right, we have in trig, we've got all these um, trigonometric uh, ratios that have theta in them. So I can write um, polar equations based off of R, and I can write basically these trigonometric functions that will represent some value in a polar grid. So what I have here is R equals 3 sine theta. Now we have off here to the left, okay, some basic information that you need to know. And you've got R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, which is the basic equation for a uh, circle centered at zero. Um, if it wasn't centered at zero, which is another equation we're going to talk about, you would have the x minus h, the quantity squared, plus y times the uh, y minus k, that quantity squared. So what I've got going on here is uh, that y is also equal to r sine theta based off of sine theta is equal to x divided by, or y divided by r. And I've got x equals r co cosine theta because I'm just solving that equation for x, because cosine theta is really x over r. So all I've done here was just rearrange that formula to say x is equal to that. And the importance that's going to play is in this equation over here that says r is equal to 3 sine theta. So let's talk about how all that pays attention here, uh, how that all works. So here we go. I've got r equals 3 sine theta. Well, over here I've got r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So if I could make this an r squared, that would be nice because then I can get an x and a y into the equation. So how do I make this r squared? The way you make it r squared is just simply by multiplying it by r. Since we have an equation, what I do to one side, I must do to the opposite side. So if I multiply both sides by r here, so times this by r, so let's throw an r in here, okay? And let's throw multiplying by an r in here. So what that now creates is I've now got an equation that says r squared is equivalent to 3 r sine theta. And now the important role that this is going to play is that now I've not only created r squared, but by making r squared, I've also created this r sine theta, which means that I have a y. So over here to the left, what this now becomes is that I've got x squared. So I've got this uh, x squared plus y squared, because that's what r squared is based off of this formula over here. And I've also got that this now, this r sine theta is really just y. So what I've got here now is 3y. So a rectangular equation has got to be with x's and y's. So I now want to write this in the standard form of some sort. And I want to say that it's equivalent to some value. Uh, in polar equations here, okay, we're going to have the, the form is going to be written in its completely factored form as well. So now what I'm going to do here, okay, is I'm going to move the y's over, so I get minus 3y, minus 3y. And what I've got now, I'm just going to bring this uh, down here, is the x squared plus the y squared minus 3y is now equivalent to 0. Now, whenever you have two equations, sorry, you can't really see that x. And uh, whenever you have these equations here, okay, that you have x's and y's, you really want to try to write them as squares, because this is a quadratic. So, thinking about polar equations, polar equations, when we have start having quadratics, are going to make circles of some sort. So, what we want to turn this into, okay, we want to turn this into, it's going to be an equation for a circle. And how do I know that? Because I have x squared and I have y squared, which means 
that this is going to be some sort of a circle. And that's just basically the key hint. So I want to put this into the formula for an actual circle. And the formula for any circle not at zero, again, is going to be this r squared is equivalent to, so this x minus k, the quantity squared, plus y minus, oops, sorry, x minus h, the quantity squared, plus y minus k, that quantity squared. So I don't know if it's still on the screen or not, but, okay, it's this r squared. Let me move it over then. So it's r squared is equivalent to x minus h, that quantity squared, plus y minus k, that quantity squared. So this is really the equation for any circle. And right now what I have here is I've got bits of it. And what I want you to notice here is that this is a perfect square, plus an, uh, I have a perfect square plus another perfect square. And if that's the case, I need to turn this into its perfect square. Okay? So by doing that, I'm going to bring this up here, and I get x squared plus y squared minus 3y equals 0. And to create this equation where I have a perfect square here, I have to do something called complete the square. And I have another video on this on co called completing the square. So if you don't know how to complete the square, I'd watch that video before I do this because I'm going to go through this one relatively quickly. So by completing the square, okay, completing the square basically says I'm going to take a look at just this part of it, okay, this, I'm going to group this y squared minus 3y, and I'm just going to do that part. So I'm always going to have an x squared, so this is going to come along for the ride, and I'll put that in at the end. So I'll have an x squared plus something at the end. So completing the square, all I do is take half the middle term and square it. So what's half the middle term? Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 3 halves. Negative 3 halves squared means that I need to add into this 9 fourths. So I now have this is x squared plus y squared minus 3 plus 9 fourths. And when I add 9 fourths in to complete the square, I have to add it to the left, to the right side because it's an equation. So this becomes 9 over 4. So now completing the square here. This expression right here within this entire equation is a now a perfect square. So I now have this x squared. And the way you figure out what it is, is literally, you took half of this for a reason. So x squared plus, and it's going to be your y term, okay? And the b, you took half of this, and that's what b is. So you get negative 3 halves, okay? That quantity squared is equivalent to 9 over 4. And now what we have here is that equation for a circle. Where this one doesn't have the minus h because it's just minus a, a 0. So that's why it's just x squared. And if I wanted to talk more about this, okay, I, I could now begin to say to you that this right here has a, a center with the circle being at 0, 3 halves. And if you were to graph this uh, in the polar form, you could go over there and put your cursor on 0, 1 and a half, and you would notice that that just so happens to be the center of the circle. Um, and even more, if I wanted to, if I took the square root of this, the radius is the square root of this value here, so if I wanted to, I could say that the radius is equivalent to uh, 3 halves. Um, so that's just more information. It's unnecessary for this part, but that's just extra information I could talk about. Um, but this is it, and that's, that's the equation. So I've now taken something that was polar, so r equals 3 sine theta really is the rectangular form is x squared plus the quantity of y minus uh, 3 halves that quantity squared is equivalent to 9 over 4. So that's my answer. So I've just taken something in the polar form and put it into the rectangular form. And again, I went pretty quick through the completing the square part. But again, what I did to get to this 9 fourths was if I took a look at this, I divided it by 2. So negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 3 halves. Square it because you need to be squared. And you get 9 fourths. And then this factored is y minus 3 halves the quantity squared. So I hope that helps with anything you're doing.